which is quite weird, loading on scuba tanks, floating on a freshwater lake, and it belies the size of this tract of water. And it's quite a different feeling diving in this freshwater environment. We found ourselves swimming along this rocky drop-off right on the edge of the island. The fish in question are a huge family called the cichlids, and they've really made Lake Malawi their home. They've colonized every square meter of usable habitat in this lake. It turns out that the cichlids are divided into different groups and one particular group is particular to these rocky environments. And at first glance there's just a myriad of different species and it's quite bewildering. Moving along this slope of jumbled boulders, we were trying to identify patterns or, you know, the most prolific species, but it was just impossible. The fish are small and it was only when we really settled down and began to look at individuals that we began to notice how unique and colorful these little fish are. They're all really closely related, but quite diverse in color and shape. They do have things in common. They all look after their young, and the vast majority of them are actually mouth brooders. I was just in the process here of trying to pick off shots of all the different individuals I could find so that we could later go and sit and identify the most prolific species. Some are quite drab, others quite striking. This one with a beautiful yellow cheek. Some were even white. And a lot were pecking algae off the rocks. This beautiful yellow and blue individual was holed up near a little weed bed. And it seemed to me that most of these fish were very much attached to a particular crevice or rocky area. Their feeding patterns are really different too, and some were pecking at the rocks, obviously either grazing algae or picking off little invertebrates. And some were slightly bigger in size. This very blue individual was about 20 centimeters long. This particular fish seemed to be one of the more common And some of these fish were intent on snuffling around in the sand which lay at the foot of the rock pile. So we could already see quite a big range of obviously colors and feeding habits. And it'll be a real treat to get to know these fish a bit better. Being one of the most abundant families of fish in the world, cichlids are found in freshwater lakes all over Africa, the Americas, and even some in Asia. There are an estimated 2,000 species of cichlids, with new ones being discovered every year. And they come in every shape, size, and color imaginable. Whichever continent they're from, scientists refer to the entire cichlid family as secondary freshwater fish meaning that their ancestors most likely descended from marine fish from families like the wrasses, parrotfish and damselfish. The cichlids of Lake Malawi are the most prolific, but in other parts of the world they survive just as well in very different conditions. The nutrient-rich rivers of South America provide the perfect habitat for cichlids. The cichlids from this region are known as New World cichlids, and in any of the rivers they can be plentiful and reach impressive sizes. This is the velvet cichlid, or Oscar, and is often caught for aquariums. 
Cichlids in South America share their river habitats with bigger predators, like otters and caimans, whose diets comprise largely of fish. Back in Africa, but far away from Lake Malawi, the Okavango Delta in Botswana is another home to another species of cichlid. The river bream, who also have to share their home waters with neighbors like hippos, who change their environment radically and regularly. These channels are made by hippos. There are also crocodiles to deal with. The cichlids have adapted to this constantly changing environment. This one's fins are the same color as the surrounding foliage. The river current also influences behavior, and the fish spend a lot of time resting behind obstacles that shelter them from the constantly moving water, and the predators that are always lurking nearby. Incredibly, the delta bream developed parallel to the Malawi cichlids, even though these two bodies of water have never been joined. Like their Malawi cousins, they're mouth brooders and share many of the same anatomical features, including egg spots. The delta cichlids, however, are generally bigger, with the smaller fish niches being filled by minnows and tiger barbs. The tilapias do well here, and their flexibility has resulted in huge shoals that colonize the channels. Fortunately for the team here at Lake Malawi, there are no crocodiles in the particular part of the lake they're diving. And they're off to do some cave diving with cichlid species they've never seen before.